Hi, are you looking for a fun activity that will help you teach about nature? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I, in three easy steps, made a woodpecker feeding activity that is a guaranteed hit with participants, toddlers to adults. So please stick around and I'll show you how I did it. are a great way to teach about nature. They're found you know, all over the world basically, uh, which makes them easy to go out and see for yourself and view and observe and watch. All right, so this activity is great if you're trying to teach about birds or feeding systems, um, food webs, adaptations, and the list goes on and on. And at the end of this activity, um, some fun things you can do to follow up is, you know, go outside for a hike. Um, you don't have to identify any birds. You know, the purpose is to go out and just observe and um, get the creative juices flowing. And uh, woodpeckers are found all over the world. So there's probably, if in your area where you live, um, some woodpeckers nearby. If not, there's you know a million YouTube videos of woodpeckers and some websites like ebird.com where you can actually, if you can figure out what species it is, you can actually log in that species sighting uh, online. Pretty fun, like citizen science. All right, so how to play the game. Basically, the participants pretend that they are hungry woodpeckers and they use their mock woodpecker tongue. In this case, I chose to use a drain weasel, which is a drain clog remover tool with Velcro on the tip. Um, so they use this to fish out grubs from the log in 30 seconds. So the drain clog tools have Velcro on the tips. Okay, blah, blah, we already got that. I put a link in the description below of the specific ones that I use, specific ones that I bought. Now, if you find one that does not have Velcro on the tips um, or something similar, you can always super glue some Velcro onto the tip of the one that you have. Okay, so woodpecker's tongue is very similar to the drain weasel. The drain weasel has the Velcro on the tips. Woodpeckers have hooks on the end of their long tongues that basically help to grab onto the food and pull it towards the bird's mouth. Similar to when we're raking leaves, the hooks on the rake help to pull the leaves towards you. Okay, so to make the log, basically I took a log that I found, um, drove around the neighborhood and there's always somebody that's you know, chopping up their tree branches or uh, getting rid of some yard waste. So this one was already cut by some nice neighbor uh, in the shape that I wanted. Um, then I attached a couple of uh, a couple of pieces of scrap wood to the base with some screws. Drilled some holes that were big enough to fit the drain weasel or the drain clog tool and the grubs. I could have used any piece of wood basically. Um, I chose a fresh log because it wouldn't have as many um, actual bugs living in it. I might get into the house or the nature center that I work at. Uh, I could have used a piece of firewood even, um, as long as it's not anything that's old and already starting to and already starting to deteriorate. I added a basket to the game to simulate a woodpecker nest um, so that participants when they get the grubs will stick them in the nest as if they're feeding a nest full of baby hungry birds. This can also be done outside as a relay game. So if the woodpecker nest is placed someplace a few feet or meters away from the basket on like a table or a stand, so they, they would have to run over and get the grubs and then run back to feed the baby birds and back and forth and back and forth. I also like doing this activity in pairs. So having two participants work together as a team, uh, it's more fun than competing against each other. And then they get to see how much energy and work it takes to be a wild animal, how hard it is for a bird to constantly try to find little bugs and grubs for hours and hours every day to help feed their babies. This also really helps with man. This activity also is great for manual dexterity. Um, so if you've got someone like one of my, uh, my young sons has a lot of physical therapy, occupational therapy, so he loves this game and he loves this game and it really helps his fine motor skills trying to get the grubs out and then back in when they uh, get the grubs out and the game's over you stuff them back in with a pen or a pencil which is fun they can load up the log for the next person that plays the game okay now if you're having a hard time uh, constructing this or you don't feel comfortable doing that that's okay you might be able to find a handy neighbor that could uh, make this log for you for instance the nature center i work at currently I have a volunteer that I can just you know, give him what I think I have in my brain and he'll come back 
he'll make it in his garage and come back and say like this and yeah great thank you so much um so maybe there's a neighbor nearby that can help you make that um there might be someone in your community circle um one of your social media friends that could help put the base together for you and if you want to take this lesson a little further you could add a math component where have the participants look up how many bugs a typical woodpecker or bird would need per day and then figure out about how many hours a day they would need to keep going back and forth to catch a bug it might take them a minute three minutes per bug to catch go out catch fly back and feed to the babies here's something that i picked up online that i use uh, as a little parabolic microphone and it's about 40 bucks online um so basically just plug headphones into it and aim it at if you see some birds that are chirping some bugs even even people that are you know talking down the road you test it out on you know neighbors but you aim it and uh and then you can hear and you can really hear the sound that they're that the birds are making so if a woodpecker is pecking or if they're just making their cackling and calling it really brings it uh to the forefront and makes that audio come alive you can hear every little thing that they're that they're doing you can also point this at your bird feeder if you see some animals um or you just see some woodpeckers out in the wild on your walk so it's really light and easy to bring with you on a nature tour something else silly uh you could do is to show how long a woodpecker's tongue is compared to their head you take uh your arm and stick it out like this so that'll show you how long your tongue would be if you were a woodpecker. So uh, there's one in the United States, a woodpecker called the red belly woodpecker, and it has a tongue that's three times longer than its head. So you know how we like to measure the kids, measure kids or measure their growth rate. So you can do something silly on the wall with some masking tape to show. I guess red would make more sense than blue, but um, after you measure how long your tongue is, get a piece of tape that long and then stick it onto the wall to show your tongue length if you're a woodpecker and you could always put you know a person's initials or name on there and stick them together if there's multiple multiple people in the classroom or uh, in the household i also like about masking tape especially the thin stuff is you know you can also go a little crazy you can kind of draw with it so if you want to draw a really bad woodpecker or bird head like this easy to do to kind of get the point across so there's the tongue you can even make a beak if you wanted to another thing you can do is search youtube for some kind of uh, slow motion woodpecker tongue video um, i'm sure there's some out there of woodpeckers feeding and that that will show how woodpecker tongues wrap around their own skulls when they're storing them. It's pretty wild. So um, that can give you a little background. That can give you and the participants a little background um, or something fun to do after the activity to follow up. So some other tips, um, sometimes the grubs get stuck in the holes. So I have sanded out a little bit of the holes, um, a piece of sandpaper, like a pencil, a little bit, and that helps. Uh, for them to come out. You can also spray, and if you want to keep it around for a little longer, you can spray it with um, some clear lacquer, and that would also help the bugs, once it dries, not get uh, stuck inside. One thing I love about this activity is that we're using nature to help teach about nature. So we're actually using something authentic from nature uh, to help them learn. Here's the log that uh, a little bit thinner um, and wider. So this one does not even need a base to go on it. You know, just a couple of holes drilled around it and good to go. So this activity is great, whether you teach in a formal classroom, uh, you're doing homeschool education. Um, if you are running camps and need something fun outdoors to do, this can also be done indoors, uh, table, like a tabletop. This can also be done indoors as a tabletop activity. For me, I've been teaching about nature since 97, and I really like activities like this, hands-off worksheets, uh, hands-on activities. You know, I don't like to get caught up in all of the uh, lesson plan, you know, verbiage of, you know, get caught up in the trap of having to have all your standards there and objectives and goals. You know, let's throw that out the window and have some fun. And if you're having fun, it's going to catch. The participants are going to get excited too. And uh, you can roll with that to the next thing. So when I first started uh, teaching in nature, I was a 
a gatherer of information. I wanted to gather every bit of information so that, you know, in case somebody asked me a question, I knew it all. And that's not the point, you know, that's, that's not fun for the learner to try and learn it through me only, you know, nature is the best teacher and, um, it's, it's way more fulfilling. It's way more fulfilling if those learners can experience nature one-on-one -on -one with us together. You know, it's fun making a discovery together. Like, oh, look, there's a new caterpillar that, you know, nobody knows the name of. The name doesn't matter. The experience is what counts. That's, that's where the connection made, is made. And then the idea is that if, you know, participants are connected with nature, then they'll want to take steps to possibly save it in the future or, you know, do a park cleanup or volunteer. So again, if you, you know, you teach at a museum, at an aquarium, um, if you teach uh, informal or have never taught about nature before in your life and you just want some fun activities to do with uh, some little ones, consider subscribing to the channel and uh, check out some of my other videos about, you know, fun nature activities. So what to do after you're done with the activity, you can donate it to a nature center. Uh, if someone made this for me, I'd love to have it at mine and incorporate it into uh, our activities. Um, you can pass it on to another educator that you know might like it or another homeschool group um, or keep it for next year and do another bird lesson with your class. But another idea is to fill these holes with some bird seed and place it out in the yard and then place a indoor outdoor camera with night vision especially like this little ring camera it was 89 dollars, and we already had the ring camera set up at work and at my house so it's easy to just set that and uh, let the birds come right up to it and you can get a close-up shot of the birds as they're feeding so everybody can watch on their device especially if a tablet or if you can screen mirror that onto a large tv then the participants can really see a huge close-up view of an animal. Anytime you can bring uh, what's far away closer and make it bigger, kids and adults love to see that. All right, here's a little behind the scenes tour. I actually have one of these logs that a friend and I made uh, holding up my blue background light. So let's take this off. Let's see. That this one um, has a base that was made out of a uh, tree cookie. Make it a little bit more, a little more natural. Uh, the bark on this one was already starting to come off and you can see, pretty cool, you can see where the bugs were starting to chew uh, on this tree. That was probably the cause of death for the tree too. I made one large screw, I made one large screw right there. I drilled one large screw into this here and set it back a little bit so that it would stay and not scratch any tables. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe and share if you know somebody that might be interested in teaching about nature also. I'm Joe and for more ways to teach about nature, check out the other videos in this channel. If you choose to try any of these activities, you, know, you do so at your own risk. And if you have to, and if you feel like you wanna try making some of these things, by all means, you need to make sure you're following all safety protocol and wear uh, personal protective equipment uh, always. And again, you do so at your own risk. So if you have ideas about activities that you would like to see or have suggestions, or if you're having trouble with an activity yourself and need some advice, I'm available to help. So if you have a topic that you're teaching about and you want to have some ideas for more activities, leave a comment below and uh, and feel free to contact me. Whether you just started teaching about nature or have been doing so for years, I'm here to help you have a more enjoyable time doing it and to hopefully get your creative juices flowing. And uh, you know, you can make uh, your own nature activities yourself and uh, or put spins on the ones that I have up here. Um, and as uh, long as you're having a good time, uh, I think that will that will rub off on the participants.